Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're diving deep into a world many of us would rather know nothing about. The hidden microscopic universe lurking in the pond water our furry friends drink from. Ever wondered what your dog might be swallowing when they take a big gulp from a pond on your walks? Today, we're on a mission to find out. While most of what we'll uncover may seem harmless, there's something lurking that could pose a real threat to our hairy companions. So, I encourage you to stick around till the end, especially if you're a pet owner. See this pond right here? Looks pretty, doesn't it? And here comes my dog. He's not much of a fan of water and often takes a moment. It's almost like he's weighing the pros and cons of having a drink. But sometimes, thirst wins out. I thought it would be super interesting to see what kind of microorganisms are floating around in this water and which ones he might potentially swallow with each drink. And that's why I took these samples straight from this very pond. And here they are, the samples in a glass. Doesn't look like much, does it? But just you wait until we check it out under the microscope. Trust me, you're in for some surprises. And what do we have here? A mosquito larva, or for those who appreciate a touch of science, Coolicidae. Yep, this little wriggler is basically the teen version of that grown-up bloodsucker we all adore. Fun fact. Did you know these larvae primarily feed on organic material in the water? Despite their later preference for our blood when they mature, they start their life as harmless filter feeders. Speaking of feeding, see how it turns its head 180 degrees? Those are its impressive mouthparts in action. They're not just fascinating to watch, but are essential tools for filtering particles from the water. Have you spotted those fine hairs on the larva's body? Nature seemed to think these little ones should start out with a plush coat. These hairs play a crucial role, helping them filter and consume organic material from the water. As for their life cycle, the duration from larva to mosquito can vary, based on environmental conditions, spanning anywhere from a few days to several weeks. Once they've matured, they transform into those pesky mosquitoes that buzz around us on warm summer nights. Now you might be wondering, is it dangerous for my dog if he swallows such a larva while drinking from the pond? Luckily, these larvae are harmless to dogs. At most, it's just a teeny snack on the go. Take a look at this nimble little guy. That's a water flea, always on the move and seemingly dancing through the water like it's got the best rhythm in the pond. The prominent eye you see is not just for perceiving light, it also plays a key role in regulating the water flea's circadian rhythm. This water flea here, filled with greenish eggs, is a striking example of Daphnia's reproductive capabilities. They can often reproduce asexually, meaning they don't need a male partner. Observing this group, you'll notice the variety in sizes. From young to old, they all have their place in the ecosystem. Sometimes you might encounter water fleas that look a bit different in color, like this specimen here. This reddish hue of the water flea is due to the carotenoids, providing it with natural UV protection. A fascinating mechanism. Nature has given these tiny creatures. If you look closely, you can even see its heart. It beats at an astonishing rate of up to 300 beats per minute. By the way, I've already made a video about Daphnia. For those interested in diving deeper into this topic, 
You'll find the link in the description below. A note on their diet. Water fleas aren't picky eaters. They feed on algae, bacteria, and other organic particles. This makes them a key player in their environment's food web. Another intriguing fact. Water fleas can tell us a lot about the water quality in an area. They are bioindicators, meaning their presence, or absence, can provide insights into the health of a body of water. What you're seeing here are green algae, presenting as countless long, thin green filaments floating through the water. These are the exact ones we saw in our water sample in the glass. Green algae are essential for ponds. Not only do they supply vital oxygen, but they are also a crucial food source for many microorganisms. Now, let's discuss their vibrant green color. Those are the chloroplasts. These tiny structures within the algae cells perform photosynthesis, converting sunlight into energy. Thanks to them, the algae not only have their signature color, but also the remarkable ability to oxygenate the water. Under all the organic plant material, something's lurking. Do you see that subtle movement? What could that possibly be? It's a worm, more specifically, Eolosoma, a genus within the annelids similar to our common earthworms. With its smooth movements, it crawls through the plant material, almost as if it's carving out its own little jungle path. They're omnivores, feeding on both plant remnants and tiny microorganisms. With their ability to decompose organic material, they significantly contribute to the health and balance of freshwater ecosystems. Now, under higher magnification, you can clearly see the bright red and orange dots on its body. It's believed these might be oil droplets, which could help the worm store nutrients, although scientists aren't completely certain yet. Here, you can distinctly see the long bristles that run along its sides. These bristles, also known as kiti, aid the worm in moving and anchoring itself in soft sediment or mud. They act much like little grip aids, allowing it to move efficiently across various substrates. But the eolosoma wasn't the only intriguing dweller in our pond sample. Here, we've got another fascinating worm. Much like the previous specimen, this one is also closely related to the oligocator group of annelids, like our familiar earthworms. If you look closely, you can observe its digestive activities in its intestine. It mainly feeds on microscopic particles, including algae and bacteria. Think of it as a micro vacuum cleaner for our pond. Pay attention to its movements like a little acrobat, it twists and turns, sometimes darting forward in quick curly motions. And yes, this worm too has bristles, assisting it in moving effectively. Oh, and just see how it's trying to squeeze itself under the cover slide. Look at its head, already peeking out. Those two tiny dots you see on its head could be eye spots. Quite unusual for oligocator members. Now, you might wonder if it's a concern for your dog to drink from the pond and possibly ingest some of these worms. Does your furry friend need a deworming treatment? Truly, there's no need for concern. Your dog definitely doesn't need any deworming treatment because of these two microworms. They're harmless. In this scene, we're introduced to two intriguing microorganisms. One displays a distinctive seed-like brownish form, while the other glows in a delicate whitish-blue hue. Starting with our brownish rounded friend, this is an ostracod, also known as a seed shrimp. Now, onto our whitish-blue specimen. This is a copepod, 
Sometimes it's also referred to as Cyclops, inspired by Greek mythology. Just like the one-eyed giant from the tales, it has a single eye in the center of its head. This eye helps detect changes in light intensity, aiding in its navigation through varying water depths. Its long antennae are crucial for movement and for filtering food particles from the water. An intriguing survival mechanism of copepods in adverse environmental conditions is the formation of a special mucus coat. Produced by specific skin glands, this coat offers protection. However, here's something to note. In certain regions, especially parts of Africa and Asia, copepods can be infected with the guinea worm. If a dog or even a human consumes water where an infected copepod resides, this intermediate host can be ingested. The larvae then penetrate the body through the small intestine. Inside a dog's body, the guinea worm continues to grow and can cause significant health issues. And just like that, we've reached the end of our microscopic journey today. I sincerely hope you found this dive into the unseen world as intriguing as I did. If you enjoyed this episode, please hit that like button and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on future explorations. If there's something specific you'd like to see under the microscope, feel free to drop your suggestions in the comments below. A small note after today's discoveries, it might be best to have our canine companions drink from clean flowing waters, or better yet, carry fresh water for them on your walks. Thanks again for joining me today, and I'm looking forward to our next adventure together. Until then, take care.